So your doctor wrote a prescription for prednisone, and you're wondering, should I take it or not? I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist, and I'm here to help you not just survive prednisone, but thrive while taking prednisone. And the first question is, should you even take it or not? So I've personally had to take prednisone several times, and one of them for even nine months. And recently, my foot doctor said, all right, well, if you're having that kind of pain, I can give you some steroids. And I said, uh, no. And he's like, what? Why not? So let's talk about my foot so you can understand why I would say such a thing. So I crushed my heel bone seven years ago in an accident. And so I've had to have one surgery to repair it, another surgery to take out the hardware because I was allergic to it, another surgery to fix my toes, and another surgery to have a total foot like reconstruction. Okay. So I've been cut open four times. I spent six months in a wheelchair. I have been through the ringer with this foot. I've had to spend six months of my life with my foot elevated. Do you have any idea how hard that is with a whole bunch of small kids running around? It's super hard. So when my doctor said, Hey, Um, if you're still having pain down there, there, it's probably just some kind of inflammation. Maybe it's plantar fasciitis or something. And I can just give you um, a pill and it'll help the inflammation go away. But to me, that's, that doesn't solve the problem, right? Like prednisone is a bandaid. It will cover up the bleeding, but it's like, if you have glass in your foot, Putting a Band-Aid over the glass is not going to heal the wound, right? It'll catch the blood, but you need to take out the glass from that wound so that it can heal. And for me, I felt that taking prednisone would just be putting a Band-Aid on the pain that I was having in my foot. And he said, okay, if you don't want to take the pill, then how about I I could just inject some? And I was like, no way. I've I've read the literature about what can happen when you inject prednisone into into joints. It can cause um, like muscle and bone loss and like tendon ruptures and all sorts of misery. It has to be terrible. I have to be unable to walk period (laughs) to have that kind of like a drastic measure. I'm not going to just have a steroid randomly injected into my joint. So he was like racking his brain to think, what else could there be? What else could he possibly offer me? And he said, well, we could try physical therapy. And I was like, okay, let's try physical therapy. So I'm, I, he made an appointment for me. Like he referred me to a physical therapist and I, I wasn't very hopeful. I've been to one before and I didn't think there would be much, but I was like, even just a little bit of improvement would be worth it to me. So I go to this physical therapist and he asks all sorts of questions, pokes, prods, figures out exactly where the problem is. And he's like, actually, you don't have plantar fasciitis. You actually have knots in these muscles. And I was like, yeah, that's probably true. I felt just the stiffness from having to have my foot in a, in like a, a splint for six weeks, recovering from one of those surgeries that it never, like it was permanently tense. It was permanently locked in this position and it never felt like it could relax. And so he found the knots and he did something drastic (laughs) after having like, so back up this, when my offer doctor offered this was, was a month after my first appointment. And at that appointment, he said, Oh, you're wearing the wrong shoes. And I was like, okay. So he said, you need to get more supportive shoes. You need to get um, like an insert, an insole, especially designed for people with plantar fasciitis. You need to um, always be wearing arch support. And then he even at this last appointment taped my foot with like built-in arch support. So I, w- I used new shoes, new insoles, arch support, and he taught me a stretch. And so I had already done all of those and he had actually improved a lot, but I still felt pain. So that's a month later where I, he, I'm at this appointment and he says, we can go to physical therapy. So the physical therapist figures out, you don't have our support. I mean, you don't have plantar fasciitis anymore. I'm like, I think I did, but I think all of those measures have improved it. And he said, but you do have like knots in these muscles. 
And I can teach you a better way of doing that stretch. But I think what you really need is something called dry needling. And I was like, what is it like acupuncture? He said, no, it's not acupuncture. That's just like putting in needles and putting them over pressure points. This is actually putting in a needle and then stimulating the muscle by like scraping it with a little tiny needle to like spasm and then release all of that tension. So he did like, he put this needle in and they went one, two, three, four, five, and scraped the muscle released all of that tension. And it was like, I can finally relax again. Like that night was the first time I could go to bed and put a blanket over my foot. Like normally I would have my toes and I couldn't have the blanket on my foot because I was afraid of the pressure from the blanket that it would cause a muscle spasm, but he'd like worked that spasm out using dry needling. It had actually solved the problem. It actually cured the problem that I was dealing with. If I had been given prednisone or an injectable steroid, it would not have cured it. I would still have those knots in the muscles. They wouldn't, they would still be there. They might, they might've shrunken. Maybe there'd be a little less inflammation, but they would still be there. So I went to this physical therapist. He gave me the actual cure. And the funniest thing he said is, you wouldn't believe how many pharmacists I have come see me. (laughs) I thought this is hilarious because pharmacists like me know what the side effects of drugs are. And we are unwilling to take the pills until we have exhausted every other option. We're not willing to run the risk of side effects until we know that it's the last resort and that the benefits outweigh the risks completely, that there are no other options. And so it was hilarious. He said, he saw me one day. And then the next morning he saw two pharmacists back to back, three pharmacists in 24 hours. (laughs) There aren't that many pharmacists where I live. It was stunning. Like all of us are seeking physical therapy at the same time, because we know that it actually might cure the problem. Whereas the drug probably won't. (laughs) So if you have a condition that isn't life or death, that, um, isn't autoimmune that you're like, I kind of have a sore throat. Should I take prednisone or I have bronchitis? Should I take prednisone? Or, um, there there's just a lot of reasons doctors give prednisone. It's kind of just like the last, like, I have no idea what's going on with you here. Have some prednisone. Maybe it'll help. But my Encouragement to you is ask your doctor if there's any other option, whether it's an old drug that could be repurposed first, or it's physical therapy, or it's, you know, weight loss, exercise, and, and having a healthier diet, whether it's cutting out gluten, whatever it could possibly be, ask if there is an alternative option first before succumbing to taking prednisone because you do not want to run the risk of the 150 side effects that prednisone causes. I am Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist signing off. Oh, 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 oh,